Hello, I'm Laura and this is Leah and we are talking about how God is revealing himself through the story of the stars that he's written and we have now come to Taurus. The star names, uh, well I mean Taurus means bull, but the other star names in the constellation mean who saves, the chief, ruling, exalted power, the leader or governor, wounded, the seven sisters or the congregation of the judge, the center, the congregated, the judges, center or foundation, the abundance and center. Hmm. Pretty cool when yeah. you think about all those in this one bowl. So the bowl has the same meaning in every language, which is great beast or bull. Hmm. Okay? Um, and he has his head lowered and his horns pointed forward and he's really an untamable, irresistible, charging forth, rampaging, <laughs> raging, head down, so to bring forth destruction on all who get in his way wow. type of bull. Wow. All right. A couple stars in their placement are really interesting. One, Aldebaran, a bright reddish star, is actually in the bull's eye, which means captain or leader or governor. Hmm. Right in his eye. Wow. Okay. And Psalms 22, 28 says, For royal power belongs to the Lord. He rules all the nations. All right? And then the, the star at the tip of his left horn means wounded or the slain. So this bull has been wounded. He was slain, mm -hmm. but now he lives. And the Pleiades, which is just interesting, the seven sisters, sometimes they're called, um, are on the shoulder, meaning the congregation of the judge. And these are the stars that are talked about in Job. That um, it, when it talks about the Pleiades, who can move the Pleiades, basically. Mm -hmm. So the uh, Decans, one of them is Orion, the great hunter, the coming prince, the light, light breaking forth redeemer. Mm -hmm. And because that's what Orion means, it means light breaker. And the other stars in Orion mean, this is he who triumphs <laughs> and the light of heaven. Okay. Wow. Another one, Beetlejuice, which is like the gigantic Beetlejuice. <laughs> it's in his right shoulder, and it means the coming branch. And it's the same um, description. The coming branch is, I talked about in Isaiah 11, 1, in Jeremiah 23, 5, and in Malachi 3, 2, Jesus is described as the coming branch. So Beetlejuice, the star, is actually a red giant. It's one of the largest stars in the sky and say if it were our sun, then the surface would reach beyond the orbit of Mars. Whoa. I mean, that's huge. Whoa. That is a big, it's big so star. so big. Yes. Regal um, is his raised foot, and it means the foot that crushes, hmm. uh, which is also talked about in Psalms 91, 13 to 15, Romans 16, 20. So here the foot is lifted up. And it's placed over the head of the enemy as though in the very act of crushing it, um, as the, the, not the name of the star talks about, uh, which means quickly coming to destroy the wounded one bruised, who breaks and bruises, treading on the branch, the mighty, the ruler, the prince, the mighty coming forth. <laughs> All right, so Orion, we see, is a mighty man with a club raised in his right hand, and the skin of a slain lion in his left hand. His left foot is crushing Lippus, his enemy, um, a decan of Gemini that Leah talked about. In the same manner, um, Opie, remember Opeticus' foot is over Scorpio. He wears a girdle around his waist from which hangs a sword. In the oldest illustrations of Orion, the tip and handle of the sword Oh, I did have a picture, but I don't have it with me, but you can look it up. But oldest illustration on his sword, on the head of it, is the head of a lamb, and on the, the tip of it is the body of a lamb. Huh. Um, so he, he, you know, how it talks about in Revelation, the sword comes out of his mouth, but he is the sword. Yeah, All right? So from, so the, the gospel includes the fulfillment of judgment on every evil influence felt by God's children from the beginning of history. In Isaiah 42, 13 and 14, it says, The Lord will march forth like a mighty hero. He will come out like a warrior, full of fury. He will shout his battle cry and crush all his enemies. He will say, I have long been silent. Yes, I have restrained myself. 
But now, like a woman in labor, I will cry and groan and pant. In John 8, 8, 12, it says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads you to life. Okay, the next account is Irenaeus, the river of the judge. So this is a picture of the idea of final judgment and deep regret for past mm -hmm. sin. Daniel 7, 12 um, <clears throat> says, And a river of fire was pouring out, flowing from his presence. Millions of angels ministered to him. Many millions stood to attend him. Then the court began its session, and the books were opened. The return of the Lord, um, Jesus, uh, will bring forth a fiery judgment that are so graphically described in Revelation. This is the stream of fire that's coming out of Orion's uplifted foot. Yet in this picture, the so-called cripple has become the crusher. The stream of fire continues to the four paws of Cetus, the sea monster who tried in vain to stop the awful flow. And the, the last he can is Ariga, the charioteer or the shepherd, um, safety for the redeemed in the day of wrath. Mm -hmm. So uh, it means shepherd or charioteer. He is depicted as a man holding chariot reins in one hand and a mother goat with a pair of kids safe and protected in the arms of the shepherd. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 40, 10 through 11, it says, Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock mm. like a shepherd. He will carry the lamb in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. Mm. This is exactly what we see presented for, um, right before us, telling about the coming judgment. Mm. We have a picture of a mighty bull rushing forth, and then a river of uh, the, a fiery river from the judge. And now we see a picture of a great shepherd. Psalm 37, this day is repeatedly referred to as the day when the wicked shall be cut off. And it concludes by summarizing the same great truth. I, in Psalm 37, 38 and 40, it says, But the rebellious will be destroyed. They have no future. That is all of us. That is where all of us are naturally mm -hmm. born, is that we are rebellious and we should be destroyed because of our rebellion against God. It says, The Lord rescues the godly. He is their fortress in times of trouble. The Lord helps them, rescuing them from the wicked. Mm -hmm. He saves them, and they shall find shelter in him. That's the good. people who look to him, to look to God, the ones with their faces fixed on him, are the ones that he's going to shelter and mm -hmm. save and rescue. So here is a shepherd king who is lovingly, holding and protecting his sheep in one hand while holding a weapon of defense in the other. He appears to be seated as if on the ground. In the zodiac, he appears to be looking toward Cetus as if keeping his eye on the great enemy. Okay. This is a picture of a good shepherd who is ready to lay down his life for the sheep. He is a great shepherd who daily speaks on our behalf before the throne and he is a great shepherd who will one day appear in glory. Mm -hmm. So the children of God redeemed by his blood will escape the terrible judgments to be brought on earth by our Lord's return. When Jesus comes back, uh, we will be rescued. We will, um, all our, our life will be redeemed and we will not mm -hmm. have to endure the effects of our sin anymore. So in the sign of Taurus, we have the swift return of the prince during the day of the Lord who has been wounded we also find the mighty hero of light coming forth in judgment, who is Orion, a fiery river of judgment which pours forth, and the good shepherd tending and caring for his flock mm -hmm. through the judgment, punishment, and giving them reward. Wow. So we, we hope that you uh, would turn to um, the shepherd, that you would let him be the one that rescues you, and that anything that you're holding back or withholding that you'd be willing to let go and cling to him, to fix your eyes on him, not on your own effort of being right with God, not on the traditions um, that maybe you have heard of doing things in order to earn your righteousness to God, because that's not how it works. Say if we were 
to swim to Hawaii. You might make it a lot further than me because I'm not that great of a swimmer. But nobody's making it. I mean, we're not, nobody's going to swim to Hawaii. And really, that's how it is with God is mm -hmm. nobody is righteous, not even one. And we need a savior. We need someone who can rescue us, put us up on their ship, on the boat, and sail us to Hawaii. And <laughs> um, Jesus is, is the only way to be forgiven, the only way to be made right before the Father. So would you put your trust in him? Would you um, let go of your life and just say, God, here I am. Have my life. I'm sorry. I have messed it up. And if you have questions, we'd love to hear from you. Check out the tab at the, the story of the stars.com that says, um, what now, uh, new believers, if you have made a decision to submit your life to God, um, or if you have questions, uh, let us know, and we would love to, to keep in touch.